If you've installed Linux, chances are that you've installed the Grub2 bootloader on your master boot record. Grub is what lets you choose the operating system to boot and is particularly useful if you have multiple operating systems. I'm going to walk through the process of changing the text colors, the background image, and the timeout for how long it waits. I'm going to demonstrate this in Debian with the most bare bones minimal install possible, but the process will be nearly the same for other distributions. Let's start with the simplest customization, changing the timeout for the menu selection. By default, it's five seconds. To change this configuration, edit slash etc slash default slash grub, and then change the grub timeout value. Change this to whatever you want. The value is in seconds. I'll try changing it to zero so it won't wait at all and will boot as fast as possible. Then I'll save and exit. You'll need to call update-grub after making any changes. This is important. Don't forget to call update-grub. Then if I reboot, I can confirm it does not wait at the grub menu and jumps right through the bootloader immediately. One quick side note. If you notice that I'm in VirtualBox and there's a virtual BIOS screen in the beginning before grub loads, if you happen to be using VirtualBox 2 and you want to change the timeout for that BIOS screen, you can do that using the command line tool VBox Manage in your host operating system. First, I'll have to turn off the virtual machine. I can run the command VBox Manage modify VM and then give it the name of my virtual machine, in my case, my Debian, then pass it dash dash BIOS logo display time and give it a number of milliseconds. I'll set it to one millisecond since I'm going to rebooting a lot and I want it to be as fast as possible. Zero doesn't work here. If you're booting a physical machine, there's no magic trick like this. Now let's look at how to change the text colors in the Grub bootloader. If we go to the Debian wiki page for Grub2, it mentions there are four variables to set, color and highlight and the menu color and highlight. If we click on color normal, it'll bring us to the GNU Grub documentation page that lists the supported colors. Pick some colors you like from here. I'll go with dark gray and light cyan, and if I need anything else, I'll go with black and white. So now that we know what variables to set and what colors to use, let's update the configuration. Navigate to slash etc slash grub.d and list the files there. You'll see a few config files. If you aren't using Debian, they might be slightly different. There's a readme in here, so let's check that out quickly. The important thing it mentions in here is that the files are loaded in order by name and only executable files are included. The other noteworthy file in here is called 05 Debian theme. If we edit this Debian theme file, we can see where it sets the colors at the comment saying, set the traditional Debian blue theme. We could modify this Debian theme file directly. However, if you want to avoid making any changes to that default file, you can create your own file. They are loaded in order by name, so we could add one at the end that starts with 42 and put our color customizations in there. I'll make it easy by just copying the Debian theme file, so we have that as a starting place and it'll also inherit the executable bit. I want my file to be the last one to load, so I'll make sure it has the highest file name, and I'll make it 42 underscore my theme. So now I'll edit the file we created, and at the top you'll notice a shebang, so this is really actually just a shell script. So we'll leave that shebang in, and we'll delete everything else that's not relevant, and I'll leave only the two lines that call the set command for the menu color and the menu color highlight. You can delete the dollar sign one at the beginning. It won't make a difference here. And then I'll change the main color to light cyan slash dark gray. And for the highlight, I'll do the reverse with dark gray slash light cyan. If you remember from the documentation, it said there were four variables. There was the menu color and menu highlight, but there was also the plain color and highlight. So I'll copy and paste these two lines and then remove the menu underscore prefix. For these, I'll choose white slash black, and for the highlight, I'll choose black slash white. Then I'll save and exit. 
And again, you must run update-grub for the changes to actually be applied. So now you have a nice config file that you can drop in any grub.d directory with your colors. You can save this file if you want to easily apply it to other systems in the future. In fact, one thing I'll do quickly is edit that config file and add a comment at the top with the file path of slash etc slash grub.d slash 42 underscore my theme, and I'll make a note about running update dash grub. This way, if I do have this file stored away for reference and I want to reuse it, I'll know where to put it and how to set it up. Earlier, I set my grub timeout to zero seconds, so I quickly want to change that back to five seconds so we can actually see the menu. I'll reboot now so we can make sure the colors have been applied. This looks good to me. Now, let's look at how to change the grub background image. If we open up that Debian theme file we looked at earlier in slash etc slash grub.d, we'll see some references for setting the background image. There's a function called set background image that does all the work. And if we scroll down further, we'll see that it checks for a value named grub underscore background. So if we set this variable with a path to an image, it'll try to use it. Okay, so we don't want to hard code our image path into this theme file but where's the best place to set that grub underscore background variable? If we go back to the Debian wiki page for grub2, it has a note about changing the background image. It says to set the grub background variable in slash etc slash default slash grub. That's the same file we edited earlier to set the timeout. It also mentions there's a package we can install that has some sample backgrounds. Let's install the package so I have some images to use apt install grub2 dash splash images. If we run dpackage dash l grub2 dash splash images, it will list out all of the files that came with the package. We'll see there are a handful of images in slash user slash share slash images slash grub. I'll pick one. How about plasmalamp.tga? You don't have to use these. You can create your own custom JPEG, PNG, or TGA files. If you want to make your own custom file, I recommend putting it somewhere in slash user slash local slash share. I found that it will automatically scale down your image if it's too large. I tried making a PNG in color paint with 1920 by 1080 resolution and it scaled it down automatically. So now if I edit slash etc slash default slash grub, I can set the grub underscore background value to the image I want. In this case, slash user, slash share, slash images, slash grub, slash plasmalamp.tga. Then I'll save and quit. Then again, you must run update-grub for the changes to be applied. And then I'll reboot. If you notice that my gray background covers up most of the image, we can make it transparent by changing the color to black. So if I edit my theme file again, and I change my dark gray background to black, then I'll run update grub and reboot, and then we'll see we can actually see through our menu and see the image. That looks much better. Here, I've loaded up a wallpaper from Devnix to show what a high resolution wallpaper looks like scaled down. You can change the resolution of grub, but I won't get into that. So now you know how to customize the grub bootloader to set the timeout, change the text colors, and change the background image.